Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Make sure you get your King James Bibles out and follow along. Today we're going to do a courageous man, foolish man, which I haven't done in a while. But God put it on my heart to name this one. Saul sees the Lord? Question mark. Saul sees the Lord? Okay. Um, if you haven't watched my uh, three-part series about the Antichrist spirit, the true Antichrist spirit challenge, um, Paul sets a great example of, is God the Father? What's Paul's reaction to God the Father? So, this is Saul before he became Paul. Not Saul, like King Saul in the Old Testament, but Saul before he became Paul. Okay, Saul sees the Lord? Question mark. Uh, Acts 9.4 And he fell to the earth. This is Saul after he's on his way to Damascus and he sees the light and, it and he falls to the earth. And heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Question mark. Capital L, Lord. Question mark. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. I am Jesus who thou persecutest. Now this is very important. Okay, why is it so important? Well, you don't have to turn here, but 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is but one capital G God, the Father, and of, who, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. After salvation, after Paul gets saved, he believes that Jesus Christ is the capital L Lord, and that there's only one God, capital G God, the Father. Jesus is God, the Father, fully and completely. Why? Because in Revelation 4.8 we read, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and the rest, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Jesus is called, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is come. He's the I am. Okay. What's the big deal here? Saul, who's persecuting the church, which we'll read about in a little bit more, he's persecuting the church. What's Paul's belief system before this happened? Well, let's go back to see. Remember, he's the strict sect of the Pharisees. What was the Pharisees' belief? Okay. Turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Prepare ye the way of God the Father, manifest in the flesh, the Lord. In the Old Testament, the Lord was a reference to God the Father because they didn't understand the Godhead in the Old Testament. It wasn't revealed to them. Okay, Jesus, the body, soul, and spirit were all there in the Old Testament. Jesus had a body in the Old Testament, an incorruptible body. He gave up that incorruptible body to come in the likeness of sinful flesh, to come in corruptible flesh. But he was perfect. But prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. There's John the Baptist saying, hey, the Lord is coming. God manifest in the flesh is coming. Matthew 4, 6, we read, And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast... This is Satan trying to tempt him. If thou be the Son of God, capital S, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 7, Jesus saith unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. People say, Well, Lord, it's, it's for Jesus. The Lord thy God. Would we read up there 1 Corinthians 8, 6? There's only one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ, and only one capital G, God, the Father. And here she is saying, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus, who is God the Father. Don't tempt me, Satan. Don't tempt me. That's what, what Jesus is saying. Turn to John chapter 9, verse 22. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. 
For the Jews had already had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. You say, well, that's just Christ. That's just Christ. Turn to Matthew chapter 26, verse 63. That's the story of the man that was blind, born blind, and now that he can see. They didn't want to be put out of the synagogue because if they admitted that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God, that he is Lord, capital L, Lord, they'd be put out of the synagogue. Let's keep going. For Matthew 26, 63. But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God. Remember what Peter said? Thou art the son of the living God. This is the Pharisees, high priest. I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Okay? They didn't believe it. They didn't believe Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. That he's God the Father manifest in the flesh. Body, soul, and spirit. That Jesus, what stood before them was God. Fully and completely. They didn't believe it. Matthew 16, 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what I was talking about with Peter said. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He confessed it. But if anybody else confessed that, confessed that, they were kicked out of the synagogues. John 6.6 6, When you say Son of God, capital S, Son of God, you're saying that God the Father is manifest in the flesh. You look at Jesus Christ, you're seeing God the Father. I and my Father are one. You speak to Jesus Christ, you're speaking to God the Father. The soul that's inside him. They were against that. John 6, 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. They go hand in hand. Capital L, Lord. When you call Jesus Lord, you're saying he's the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's God manifest in the flesh. That's God the Father that you're talking to. That's God the Father that you're walking around with. God among us. That's the whole point. Victoria, no. I said no. Sorry about that. She's trying to scratch. Victoria, get over here. Sometimes she'll scratch on the mat that's out here. Sorry about that, brother. This is Christ. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Turn to John 5, 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because... He not only broke the Sabbath, but said that also that God was his Father. So, what's the big deal? Making himself equal with God. Making himself equal with God. Philippians 2.6 says, Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. This is Paul after salvation. But before salvation, he was against it. Jesus is not God the Father. How many people are saying that today? Jesus isn't God the Father. He's his own separate God, God the Son. And they like to say God the Son more than the Son of God because they don't mean the same thing. Thou art the Christ, the Son, capital S, Son of the living God. That means that, that that's the flesh of God the Father right there walking among us. we got to take that away. No, no, it's a separate God. It's a separate God. Turn to Acts 26.5. This is Paul talking about his life before he got saved. Acts 26.5. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. What did the Pharisees do? They tried to get him to admit that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he's Lord God Almighty. So they can condemn him and crucify him because they reject that. 
They reject it. He's not God the Father manifest in the flesh. It's not God the Father speaking to us right now. Okay. Philippians 3, 5. You don't have to turn here, but it says here also, circumcised the eighth day, this is Paul talking about it himself, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal persecuting the church. We're going to be talking about that. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Remember what we read in Acts 9.4, And he fell on the earth and heard a voice say unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Question mark. And the Lord said, God the Father said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Okay, Lord, but remember in the Old Testament, they call God the Father Lord. But we find out there's only one Lord, Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus is God the Father. Well, let's go back to that story and let's start out at Acts 9 1. Let's see what Paul's reaction is to Jesus being God the Father. We just had to get that in, in context that, hey, they didn't believe Jesus was God the Father. They didn't believe that he's the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. They didn't believe he was Lord, capital L, Lord. They didn't believe it. There's a lot of people today that don't believe it. They make him out to be a separate God. Or they tear him down and say he's not God at all. Ultimately, they're all saying he's not God, period. When you say God the Son, you're not saying, you're saying he's not God. Capital G, God. They can try to put a capital G in front of it. It's a lowercase g according to the scriptures. Acts 9.1 And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughtering against the disciples of the Lord. Okay? People who believe that he is God the Father manifest in the flesh. He's God fully and completely. He's going out and persecuting them. Went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues. Remember the high priest we just talked about? They were asking Jesus, trying to get him to confess that he's the Christ, the Son of the living God. Because they don't believe it. They wanted him to say it out loud so they can condemn him. And desired of him to Damascus, uh, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So you have a guy there that he doesn't believe Jesus is God the Father. He doesn't believe he's, he's God Almighty. He doesn't believe he's the Christ, the Son of the Living God, and he's out persecuting people who do. You're going to be persecuted for doing, for believing that. Right? You're already going to feel a little bit of it today, but there's people in the past that have died for that stand that Jesus Christ is God the Father. He's God fully and completely. They've died for it. And you have people today that will use that and say, I'm, I'm like them, I'm one of them. Well, you believe Jesus, is God the Fa oh, Jesus isn't God the Father, then you're not one of them. Don't act like you can sympathize with what they went through. You're not going through it. Verse 3, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? What's that question mark? He's saying, Is that you, God? Is that you, God? And remember, the Jews said, We have one Father, even God. They only believe in one God, capital G, God, as the Father. That's all they believe in. So he's like, is that you, Lord? Is that you, God the Father? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuteth. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And Paul and Saul goes, oh, it's just Jesus. That's not the Lord. That's not God the Father. That's not, you know, is that, was that his response? What was his response? Verse 6, And he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, there's no question mark there. God, the Father, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. 
true apostle is someone who has seen physically Jesus Christ. Verse 8, And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. What was Saul's reaction to Jesus Christ being God the Father? It is I, Jesus Christ, whom thou persecutest. Lord, what will you have me do? He called him Lord again. He didn't go, oh, that's just Jesus. I'm, you're the one I'm going after. I'm hunting you down. Philippians 3, 4. Though I might, ha might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews is touching the law of Pharisee. Remember, we read that one. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteous which is of the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Thou art the Lord, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, he had to give up that old way of believing that Jesus isn't God the Father. He's not God, he's not that Jesus isn't the capital S Son of God, which makes him the body, the flesh of God the Father. He is God the Father. Verse 8, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Remember what you got in trouble for with the Jewish people? If you said that Jesus was the Christ or the Son of the living God. In other words, he's your Lord, capital L Lord. He's God the Father, manifest in the flesh. He counts it all but a dung. He had to give all that up. How many people are refusing to do that today? They want to hold on to the pagan thought that, and the whole idea that Jesus is not God the Father. He's not God. He's not connected to God the Father because he's the body and they're one, and he's God fully and completely. Oh no, no, no. He's just a third of God. He's the second member of the Trinity. He's, cap he's supposed to be a capital G, but according to the Bible, there's only one capital G, the Father. And since they say he's not the Father, it has to be a lowercase g, God the Son. Paul said you had to get all that stuff up. You want to be courageous? You need to, you need to believe the book. You need to believe in the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. Who cares what group you're a part of? When God reveals the truth to you, you need to come out of that false system that you're in. Acts 21, or I'm sorry, Acts 26, 1, chapter 26, 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touch in all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. The Jews turned against him. Why? If he didn't believe Jesus is God the Father, that's what the Jews got angry with, the, with him about, about Jesus. That's why they wanted to stone him, because you're making yourself equal with God. You're calling God your Father. You're saying you're the Son of God. Son of the living God. I and my Father are one. He that has seen me hath seen the Father. On and on and on. That's why they hated him. Why did the Jews turn on Paul if, he didn't, if Paul doesn't believe Jesus is God the Father? Then the Jews wouldn't have turned on him. They turned on because he got saved and believes that Jesus is God fully and completely. Verse 3, Especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at first among mine own nation of, at, Israel, at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, that of Jesus Christ, unto which the promise are twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accursed of the Jews. You're going to be accursed by this world, of, of this world. In other words, they're going to try to curse you because you believe that Jesus is God fully and completely. Who wouldn't want to believe that? People that aren't of God. People who don't want God being the Lord 
Jesus Christ being the capital L Lord of their life. They want to be their own Lord. Verse 8. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Here we talk about the dead. Every time it comes to the resurrection of the dead, that proves that he's God the Father Almighty. He's the Lord God Almighty. That's the whole point. You don't believe in the resurrection up here. It's down here. And you live it. The old man is crucified with Christ. The new man is raised with Christ. The fact that Jesus was dead and buried for three days and rose again proved that he is God the Father Almighty. He's fully God completely. He is who he said he was. But when you start speaking about the resurrection, things go south. When you hear about Paul preaching the resurrection, there's people that just mock him, make fun of him. Verse 9, I barely thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Contrary. He cut Christians down. He didn't believe Jesus Christ was God the Father. Verse 10, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Same kind of people are today with Christians, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women. And then there's those that get saved and their attitude changes. Paul's did. Lord, what would I have me to do? He didn't deny Jesus was God the Father when he was shown the truth. Verse 11. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme, get them to denounce that Jesus is God the Father. Jesus is not God. He's not capital L Lord. He's not the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blaspheme. How many times have people turned their back on absolute truth so they can be part of the, a special group or so their family won't turn against him? Because they might have been killed. There was people killed for that belief. And being exceedingly mad against them, I per persecuted them even unto strange cities where he technically didn't have any authority. He still persecuted them and went after them. Whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speak unto me and said in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? Question mark. And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and those things which I will appear unto thee. Deliver thee from the people, verse 17, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from the darkness to the light and from the power of Satan unto God. He didn't say Jesus, he said God. But he's talking about Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus. He's going to turn people from the power of Satan. So when he says Lord there, he's talking about God the Father. Turn them from the power of Satan unto God. There's only one capital G, God the Father. Could it be that they're one and the same? Paul believed it. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Jesus talking to Paul is what it means by faith that is in me. Courageous man or foolish man? Was, was Saul, who later became Paul, a foolish man for believing that, that nasty, nasty heresy that Jesus is God the Father? No, he was courageous. He went against the popular belief of the world that no matter what, we got to tear Jesus down. He's not God fully and completely. It wasn't God, the Father, walking amongst us. He had to stand up knowing that the Jewish people would turn on him. That 
bad things could happen to him. He definitely got fired. <laughs> he was no longer a Pharisee. He definitely got fired. That's why he says, I was. Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. The number one thing that people will attack is the resurrection with the life that they live. If Jesus is not God fully and completely, then it wasn't God's blood, God the Father's blood that was shed on the cross. Even though the Bible says, feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. No changed life, no resurrection. The changed life is serious. They say, well, you're making it a requirement to salvate. No, it's a requirement as proof that you truly got saved and born again. It's required as proof that you repented. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. It's proof that that belief of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ isn't up here, it's down here. Because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. John 21, 12. We're come here, we're going to end it here. John 21, 12. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of his disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Was Saul a courageous man for turning his back on the belief that Jesus was not God the Father and actually treat him and call him Lord? Calling him the Christ, the Son of the living God. He was very courageous. Brothers and sisters in Christ, continue to be courageous and standing for the Word of God and the Jesus Christ who is God fully and completely. Don't let anybody take that from you. Okay? So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.